Hello, Hill Giant Tubers, and welcome back to Let's Play Pools of Darkness with me, Blue Ankylo. So at some point, those pools that are dark will be able to teleport through them, because I believe that's how Elminster was uh, moving us around there when Flan got destroyed. So that's that's going to be the link to the title, guys. We're gonna we're gonna figure it out. Anyway, uh, hey look, it's our uh, camping screen from the end of last episode. Last episode, we cleared the Temple of Tear, and um, mostly made everyone happy. I guess uh, we may have killed Laurelin the Banshee instead of reuniting her with her long-lost love, uh, Brynwolf, or something like that. Shucks, didn't quite work out. A few people may have died. Um, I did recorrect Lost Constitution. Um, it, it's just... We're never going to be able to keep it up if people lose constitution every time they die, so... For now, we'll just be restoring stats. Just pretend restoration cures it, and once you're out of, uh... Once you're out of combat, you can go to a temple, cast restoration. It restores lost levels, it restores lost attributes, it seems fair. Anyway, um... One short thing I want to mention, uh, I did... I've been doing a lot of reading on, uh, spellcasting lately. So, um... I don't want to spend, again, too much time. But uh, there's a couple little notable details for first edition that I wanted to mention. Um, a lot of different spells have different, um, slightly different effects based on how you use them, I guess. So any spell that you can select different numbers of targets, like the hold person, hold monster type spells. And there's a couple others that are like that, I believe, as well. Um, so if you target... I think uh, the cleric version targets up to three people, basically. Um, if you target three people, it they all just roll their save. It's kind of hidden. You don't know what their saving throw is against magic, because it just counts as magic in this game. There's no reflex saves. It's, it's weird. Like, there's five different types of saving throws. There's, like, paralyzation, which I guess whole person would actually come under, and it's, like, stops you from moving type spells. Then there's, like... Death magic, I think. There's spells that come from wands or rods. There's breath attacks from dragons. And then the, the fifth is just it defaults to basic magic. So everyone has like different um, saving throw rolls based on those five different numbers. Um, I actually can look them up thanks to Goldbox Editor's uh, save editor, just for interest. Like I can't show it, I don't think, easily, no. Um, but just for interest's sake, uh, Shinga, who is a paladin, has amazing saving throws. He's got a, a saving throw of 2 against paralyzation and death magic, a saving throw of 2 against petrification and polymorph, a saving throw of 3 against rods and wands, a saving throw of 2 against breath weapons, and a saving throw of 4 against magic. Now that's a number basically out of 20, so you're rolling a 20-sided dice. If he rolls a 2 or higher for his uh, paralyze, he does, well, he passes his saving roll, his saving check, basically. And and what that means depends on the spell. Sometimes it nullifies it. Sometimes you take half damage. Sometimes instead of dying, you're just paralyzed or something. You know, like, it's, it's saving throw. Um, but Shingas are the best, and that's because Paladins, especially in first edition, have amazing saves. Um, I think mine actually might be the worst. Uh, mages... Eh... I'm just looking through them all kind of quick. Mine are about the worst, unfortunately. So, for instance, mine are, instead of, like, twos and threes, mine's, mine are between seven and eight, and I have 11 against breath weapons. So, it's still good. I've got, like, a more than 50% chance to avoid uh, being paralyzed by a hold spell. And as your character's level goes up, uh, your saving throws tend to get better. Um, so, that's cool and all. I'll just... So... That's sort of the basics for saving throws for first edition, and the game does a pretty good job of uh, replicating it. Uh, what I was saying about something like Hold Person is, if you cast it at your maximum number of targets, three, they just get their normal saving throw. If you cast it on two targets, they get their saving throw minus one. So whatever roll they make is subtracted one because it's like a powerful spell. And if you cast Hold Person on just one target, it's minus two or maybe even minus three. I forget exactly. But point is, depending on how you use the spell, you can actually lower their resistance to the magic. And uh, some spells, it's, it's really hard to say which one. Like, I did a lot of reading up on them, but it's, it's still really hard to remember. 
Uh, some spells kind of ignore saving throws. I think death spell is like based on their hit dice and it will just straight up kill with no saving throw a certain number of hit points of enemies. It's kind of more of an AoE. Against a really strong enemy, it probably won't work. Uh, Disintegrate doesn't even really have a saving throw, but it's single target. And I think the only thing that stops it is magic resistance, um, which is a diff instead of a saving throw, a magic resistance is just a percent. Uh, so if you've got 50% uh, magic resistance, every one in two, like, you know, half the time magic is just nullified, and then they still get their saving throw even if it passes the magic resistance. So the point is, some of the spells are really complicated, and I'm probably not using them right because I haven't memorized, and it doesn't show you in-game the, uh, the very specific details about all the spells like that. Anyway, that's, I don't want to spend any more time on uh, spellcasting. We've already talked about it a ton. So let's get back to work. So um, as far as the map goes, we started like over here uh, and there wasn't really anything to do on these these first couple areas. This was our Temple of Tear. I'm not sure, that there's probably like a, a, a correct order of how to do the, the, the areas, like the, the dungeons. Um, like some are probably easier than others. Some have probably much stronger rewards. I never know, like, because it's my first time playing the game, I don't know ahead of time. I'm just going to go by closest to our starting point. So we're going to go, we went here first, pretty close. We're going to go here next. Stuff down at the bottom on the opposite side of the sea, because I think we have to go all the way around, unless we get a boat. It's, this is like really far away, so we're going to save that for a long time away, basically. That's, that's what I'm thinking. So, anyway. Let's head up. Oh, first we're going to kill some undead, because why not? Let's have a quick look what we got. Oh, that's a little bit stronger. So vampires, that's cool. I guess, you know, I could be using next. It's a little bit easier to move around and find things. So there's a bunch of vampires. I'm kind of curious if I move Fella up front, a little bit closer maybe, if he can turn them. So it looks like he turned almost all of them rather than destroying them. So I bet you will get no experience. Yeah. So turning is making them run away. It's not as good as destroying, which is uh, only if there's a really big difference in level. So it might not always be a wise idea to do that, but I wanted to show it off one more time. Okay, so I feel like this is a good uh, area to go next, um, mostly because it's nearby, and it has a symbol of the silver blade. So obviously we know a little bit about that. Um, one other thing I want to mention is I've lowered the background music a little bit. Um, I thought in the last video it was a little bit too loud. I'm hoping it's not too quiet this time. It's, it's very difficult to get the music balance correct the way I'm recording this. Um, and some songs are just naturally louder or quieter. This is a very long song, so eh, we'll just go with it. All I wanted is the background to not be completely silent. Anyway, let's get to work. Oh, right. So technically, I got this far on my trial run. Forget about that. We don't know anything about this fairy. <laughs> the walls are a mixture of natural stone and ancient masonry. The air is choked with dust and a terrific ringing of picks on stone echoes through the passages. You come to see Silver Lady? I mean, given our history with the Silver Blades, it's probably not a bad idea to see her. Silver Lady through North Door. Past North. Uh, I'm going to assume the Giants will attack us if we don't go this way, so... Oh! An impressive warrior, Vala of the Silver Blades, grips your arm firmly and greets you with a hearty hello. She is a striking figure, powerful in both limb and character. You guys remember Vala. Hey, she's back. Fellow Blades, it is good to see a familiar face. Bane has played a strong hand, and every weak-willed cur wants to stand behind it. Shall we join our swords against them? You know it, girl. Hey, we got experience for... I gotta level up, yo! I'm glad to hear it. Here, take this shield. Call it a gift. So, it's a silver shield. It's probably one of those awesome silver shields that we had a couple of last game. 
A Vasan army is tunneling under the snow blocked passes with elementals, hoping to join with Bane. Of course, it's snow and icy monsters, probably. All right, journal entry 63, you got it. All right, let's bring that up. Vala explains, the Vasans are using earth and fire elementals to create a massive tunnel for their armies. With the passes blocked, they have no way to reach the Moon Sea. The elementals are drawn to the power of the Oak Root Staff, the World Stone, the Crucible of Flame, and the Lindenwood Staff here in the ruins. Another four elementals in this dungeon? Crazy! These artifacts were created long ago by a wizard from Thar. Ah, uh, those Tharians always doing stuff like that. Alright. The four items must be found quickly in order to control the elementals. I have convinced the hill giants to help with the digging by telling them that the Varsans will turn the realms into a flat desert. Oh, that's right, because, like, hill giants really love hills. Like, like they, like, it's no joke. It's not just their name. They love hills, and they detest flat. Flat is, like, the worst. I, that's a great little bit of lore there. Thanks, Vala. Good. Vala takes up her sword and moves to the door. I will stop the Vasans, whatever the cost. The lands around Moonsea can well do without their treacherous hearts. I don't know much about Vasans, but we've got Vala back on the team. Let's have a quick look. I'm sure uh, Christiane is happy to see her again. So she's a freaking level 23 fighter. Oh, her level is too high. That, that's good. You know, she's got a really high level. More HP than Shinga, but... You know, her saving throws won't be as good, and her armor class is not quite as amazing as ours. Um, I guess if someone casts Detect Magic, we can probably just check out what her... Uh, um, I don't have one memorized. I can, I can find out what her um, enchantments are. Alright, so let's have a quick look. Oh, I didn't actually ID them. That's too bad. Well, they're probably pretty good, whatever they are. So what did we pick up uh, shield-wise here? We picked up a silver shield plus four. Well, that's not quite as good as Shinga's, but you know what? This silver shield is probably a real silver shield that will reflect gaze attacks, and I bet you mine won't. The good news is now I can try to duplicate, because, like, we should have imported one of these properly, but I had to try to make do with my magical hacks. Um, now that I can see the, the, the armor ID for this, I might be able to turn this shield into a uh, equivalent, like actually silver. So that, uh, later on, perhaps, um, someone won't be turned to stone. Oh, we should look at these scrolls. I keep forgetting. Uh, another shield plus five is pretty good. Shield plus three. So we've got an upgrade for maybe pixel. I feel like we should give it to Christiana because she's got the lowest AC right now. And Val is her buddy, so let's move that on down. And I mean, like, I know it's sort of cheating by free identifying, but we could have figured out the modifier for this shield just by equipping it and doing a tiny bit of math. So, like, oh look, we have minus 10 armor class. Take off a plus 3. Oh, I wonder what armor class minus 1 this shield could be. You know, it's not that complicated, right? Um, also, I'm going to take this opportunity to show you the uh, DOS box in-game level up system. Normally now you need to go back to a town and train to level up. But let's just uh, role play that um, we brought a trainer with us because we're we're a really super powerful army. Okay, so let's go, uh, let me see, I have to click. It's in, I know it's up here somewhere, level up, there we go. Can you guys see that? No. Oh, I can't. Sh I, have to, I have to show you the screen because this is a really good screen. This is something that isn't in the base game and really helps explain what a level up is. It's so good that it's like worth me uh, sending it, spending a second here getting to work. Um, I need to add the leveler. There we go. Okay, so this is what I could see. So Blue Ankylo gets a level up for his cleric skills. And I got 1 HP out of it. My Thaco is now 10. 
Uh, I don't know if that changed. I don't know what mine. I don't know what mine was before, but it is now ten, and my saves. That's three of the five types of saves got better. Probably plus one, I would assume. Maybe plus two. Remember, I said my breath weapon save was eleven a second ago. It just got better, and I got more spells per day of, of various cleric spells, and I learned uh, level seven cleric magic, like that. So that's, I think, really, really cool that um, we can see that in-game now. Like, that's going to give us so much more information on our level ups. Uh, so we'd actually have to memorize some of those. I'm not, I'm not going to do this right now uh, because we're in the middle of a dungeon. But um, theoretically, I've got new spell slots and I just learned uh, this magic here. These four. So res these are like the brand new... They weren't in the Secret of the Silver Blades at all. These were only added into Pools of Darkness. Um, we probably mostly want... I actually don't even know. Restoration returns lost levels. Resurrection raises dead plus all HP. That's probably the best. Um, if this one plays by the actual rules, the problem is... I'm pretty sure Resurrection, if you use it in, in the like tabletop version... Um, your cleric literally can't cast any magic or fight, like, in any combat actions for the number of days equal to the level of the character they resurrected. So if we resurrected a level 10 fighter, I believe the rule would be 10 days of no combat from the cleric. You'd basically have to go on break for, you know, two weeks. I'm not sure if the game has that. It probably doesn't because it's kind of a harsh penalty, but... Uh, I was looking up some spells, and I, I happened to note that that had a really, really harsh penalty. Anyway, um, it's probably the spell we'll want for emergencies. Okay, let's get to work here. Oh, you know one thing we could do? Hold on, just a sec. Just listen to this awesome, uh, jazzy, uh, blackjack music here for a second. I love this song. I don't know. I know it's cheesy, but I love it. It's a Bossa Nova Blackjack song. Can you guess why I'm doing this? Anyone who's guessed uh, the reason behind my uh, reloading here, plus one blue ankylo point. But uh, if you haven't figured it out pretty quick, no blue ankylo points. All right, begin adventuring. Sure. Alright, so we're right back where we were, except, as soon as I load Goldbox Companion up... Oh, look who's joined the team up top! There you go. I just figured... I forgot to do that with Priam last last dungeon, so I want to make sure we had Vala on the team properly. Alright, let's get to work in here. We've got to find some artifacts. We could... Prayer. Prayer is... I looked up some of the durations as well. Prayer is one round or one step per level of caster, so we can get like 14 steps out of prayer. Um, protection from evil is like a long time. Hours, I believe. The walls here seem ancient and worked by skilled hands. Deep holes line the walls. Oh yeah, that was one of the things. So like, okay, I know magic, always magic. I'm always on about the magic these days. So I think I was talking before about... Um, is it in here? Oh, it's a higher level spell. We don't actually know it yet. But there's this mind blank spell that I said was probably pretty bad. It just c protects the target from enemy um, charm and hold or... I think it's just charm and feeble mind. And I was like, oh man, that's a dumb spell. The thing is, it lasts for 24 hours. So you can cast it before you start the dungeon. It'll last the whole way through the dungeon. Um, which turns it into actually a really good spell. There's not very many spells in these old gold box games that last between encounters. Uh, so anything that lasts like a full dungeon is actually really good. It's just, you have to know how long they last, which is, you gotta do your reading, you know. Vassans and Drow are laying plans for an alliance they attack. Alright, well we needed some combat here. So what are we up against? These are Vassans. I really don't know anything about Vassans. The name is not... Striking any memories. And didn't they have two A's? V, double A, S, S, A, N before? Now they're just Vassans? Um, 
I guess we can check if they're in the guide. Um, we know a little bit about drow. You know, um, undead, or not undead, um, underground elves for the most part. They've got lots of lore. You may have heard of Drizzle. <laughs> we should call him Drizzle. Um, Drizzed. Let's see, so do you think there's anything about drow? Uh, not drow. There's probably, there could be drow in here too. Let's have a quick look. So we're looking for Vasan and drow. Maybe new characters? There's not as many monsters in here as I was hoping. Like, my, my ability to look stuff up is actually quite limited. Hill Giant Shamans are new. Uh, I guess that's it. We're, we're just not going to know anything about them. Alright, that's fine. No, nothing to worry about. Let's just kill them, right? So, I guess priority is we do want to interrupt the Drow Wizards. The Warriors are... They look fairly strong. They're probably like... I'm guessing maybe level 10 to 12 fighters, somewhere in that ballpark. So, that's pretty strong. Now, Rodica can't really move anyway, so it's either arrows or magic. Um, I'd like to interrupt all the... Uh, I'd like to interrupt all the wizards before they get a turn. So, like, this is not a good time for testing out Disintegrate. We're just going to try, you know, Old Faithful Fireball. Rodica went first, so she's got the best chance to interrupt. We don't want to hit Pixel, though. Alright, here we go. This will hit most of the enemies and all the mages. Not a lot of damage. Oh, snap! They did not... The wizards, so... Okay, what does that mean? They could either have complete fire immunity, unlikely. They could have a... Um, they could start the battle with a minor globe of invulnerability. Mm. All three of them avoided damage, so I doubt they have magic resistance, because usually enemies will have like 10 or 20 or 30% magic resistance. It's pretty unlikely all three would have rolled complete dodge. Hmm. Well, that's going to be difficult to interrupt. All right, blue ankylo. I'm going to have to use a more powerful magic I could just try an Ice Storm. If it, if it was... If it turns out that it was... Um, a minor Globe, Ice Storm would work. I'll try it. This will break a Minor Globe, if I totally guessed right by Fluke. I believe this will not hit... I think the... The Ice Storm is... Um, you know how the Fireball ignores the three in the corner? I believe Ice Storm ignores all the exterior squares plus the corners of the next square. Like, okay, like, I think Ice Storm ignores all of these outer squares and the inner corners inside that. I think. I forget exactly. It didn't work. Alright, well, things are gonna get real interesting. Okay, um... Oh, well, Christina, we're going to test out another thing here. Can you shoot a bow while you're adjacent to someone in melee? A lot of Dungeons and Dragons, like, disable this. Yeah, I don't think we can. Yeah, so we can't use a bow from here. Well, that's going to be bad. Uh, I don't really have any way to interrupt. Uh, maybe I should have tried Delayed Blast Fireball. Shucks. Ah, uh, Silver Shield, what am I doing? So, I could try another spell. Old Monsters is even higher level. So, okay, if they had a globe of invulnerability rather than a minor globe, it would have also blocked Ice Storm. So maybe now we try a level 5 spell? Could try Cone of Cold. I think she's in a spot where she could probably hit them with it. Uh, Fella took damage, can't cast. Vala, okay, one good bit. She can interrupt that. Alright, Ice Storm came in, interrupted Christiana, that sucks. Okay, well, they're only using Ice Storms, they're not too terrible. I mean, the damage is gonna add up. 
Gotta kill some of these warriors too quick. Uh, we could move down. And... I think, is this a new, is this the second round? Hmm, maybe we're not gonna get away with much magic in this fight. You know what we could do? Because it's turning into a rather, relatively difficult battle, we can throw on a prayer. This will make it a lot easier. Let's move over here. So she can target either wizard down there. Uh, bless and curse you can't use when you're adjacent to enemies, so that kind of thing won't work. We could probably pull a protection from evil off as well. They're almost certainly evil enemies. And I'm kind of annoyed that my magic is, like, not working here. Um, I could try hold monsters. This will kind of test if they are, um... What am I trying to say? If they are a uh, globe of invulnerability or something else stopping us. Again, if I only targeted one or two, I'd have a better chance, but... Okay, well, it's hard to say. <laughs> it's hard to say if that was working or not. Alright, Rodica, time for you to go fight one of the mages. Alright, protection from evil, 10 foot radius. I think it's considered... There's a number of feet between each... I forget how they count squares in terms of feet for radius, but... We'll go like that, see if that works. Okay, we got lucky, nobody got held. That would have been really bad. Alright. Melee it is. Alright, that's good. Feeble Mind, did that work? Oh, shoot. Uh... I'm looking, okay, one thing I can do here, I can show you guys all the spells that have taken effect. Uh, I don't think anyone was feeble, it, it, it went too quick, quick, I didn't see it. It says reflecting. Uh, hope that doesn't mean, like, the names are messed up and she's been feeble-minded. That will, well, only thing feeble mind does is lowers your intelligence, so you can't, uh, cast magic, basically. Um... So magic has been very unhelpful here, hasn't it? Pixel and Fella could use a little bit of healing. Alright. Sorry. Let's, uh, cure serious wounds, I guess. Okay, and I want to cast it on... Can you really cast Cure Serious Wounds that far away? I thought you had to be adjacent. I don't know. Yeah, it has to be adjacent, yeah. I can't cast it on Shinka, that's it. Alright. Interrupt. Survive! There we go. And now Shinka can move down and hit the other wizard. Excellent. Now we're good. Alright. That was, uh more dangerous fight to start with than I was expecting. Gotta keep my wits together here. Be nice to get some backstabs. Got attack from behind. Alright, we're gonna delay. It doesn't really matter, but we're gonna delay. And she went... Anyway. Well, no backstabs. The good news is, like, we're seeming- we seem to have no difficulty hitting these enemies. It's mostly just dealing with the drow wizards, which apparently are, like, immune to a lot of magic. A reasonably good amount of experience. Alright, so gear! Well, it's hard to say if any of this is worth it. Um... Let's detect magic, at least find out if it's enchanted. So, like, the cloaks are not enchanted, the short bows are probably not good enough. We got another helm or two? I'm interested if they're, like, plus AC helms, because we could use that. I have a feeling the long swords aren't going to be that great. I'll pick up, like, 
the chain mail and the drow chain mail. Oh, too much. We'll probably throw a lot of this on the ground once it's been identified. I just want to see if any of this is worth equipping. It's not like we're going to take it back to town. I'm just going to check if it's better than anything we've got equipped, basically. Alright, so view items. Helm plus one, right? So, and drow chain plus three. I think it's still, like, stat-wise, I think it still just counts as chain. Elven chain has better armor class than chain, but drow chain is the same as chain, I think. I could be wrong. I'm not 100% sure on that one. But it looks like we've got some interesting items here, at least. It was a tough fight, but maybe we get some good rewards out of it. Alright, so let me check if you've got no rings, all you've got is a sword, armor, and shield equipped. Does the helm continue to work? So, AC minus 12. Alright, well everyone should get a helmet then, because uh, that's awesome. Let me trade a couple around. So, um, well, Vala might not get one too soon, but, um... Sorry, I pressed the wrong button there. Select. Trade. Select. So the Drow Longsword plus three is... I mean, they're probably not going to compete. Let me just check here. So 1d8 plus 16 damage should go down by two. 1d8 plus 14, and also uh, plus two Thacko. So... Unless you had a less than plus three weapon, that's not going to be very good. Alright, so forget Drow long swords. Let's just throw them on the ground. Uh, normal long sword plus twos are even worse. Chainmail. So, so most of the stuff we picked up is garbage. And the only reason the helmets are worth it is because we didn't have any helmets at all, basically. The cloak didn't work... For some reason. I wonder if it was interfered with by the armor. Because rings seem to interfere with armor as well. Minus 12. Minus 12. Yeah, I, I never know. I never know. It's so weird. Why does the helmet work but not the cloak? Huh. Well, it's a nice little upgrade. You know, plus one AC is not a big difference, but it's a difference. And it gets harder and harder to get any notable... Um, AC improvement in the late game. Well, I think after this, everyone will have a helmet now. I think, except Vala. Uh, I should check this drow chain. So compared to plate plus four, we're at armor class negative 14. Switch it over. So it's three worse. Which actually means it has a better base armor class than plate mail. Doesn't it? Because it should be one worse. Negative 14, negative, no wait, it's, okay, hold on. I'm trying to math, it's complicated. Okay, if they were exactly the same tier of armor, like if they were both plate mail, you would expect 14 to 13. Instead, it's 11. So that means that the drow chain on its own is two points worse than plate mail. Uh, banded mail is one point worth worse in fact let's just look it up i'm trying to do a lot of stuff in my head here if we looked to the journal i know this is in the uh, in the um the table section here somewhere at least it, it used to be armor 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 table here we go so plate has a base of three banded and splint is four so yeah, two points worse is Chainmail, and Elven, I guess Drow falls into this kind of category. Um, so if you had Plate, you need it to be two better to be the same. Although, uh, movement does increase, so all things considered, Plate plus three is worse than El uh, Chain plus five. Right? Okay. So... What am I trying to get to? Um, chain plus three is only as good as plate plus one or banded plus two. No one uses anything that bad. All it would do is give us a little bit of movement and that's not worth it. Let's just drop it. All right, I gotta check those scrolls, I know. Have we handled all of our loot? 
All right, I think we've handled all our loot. Oh, I have to equip. Right, right, right. Elves. So that means the Elven Chain is probably the same as Drow, except I know it works... I know Elfin Chain is supposed to work with Thieves. Also, for interest sake, Wands of Spells cast it as though they were level 6. So this is a, a, a 6d6 Fireball or Lightning Wand. Not nearly as strong as if you cast it manually. Okay, well everyone got a little bit more AC there. And if we find another Helmet, we'll give it to Vala. Oh, there you go, Ring of Blinking. Cool. Not bad. She's got some good stuff. No. Okay, one fight down. That, uh... We're not making huge progress here. Let me be clear. Let me, um... Do a little bit of topping up healing here. Nothing too crazy. I'm not gonna full heal, but I want to get everyone into the green. Even Christiana is going to cast a couple healing spells. Heal up Rodica a little bit into the green zone. Alright, that's good enough for now. Alright, save. And let's keep moving. To the east is the large chamber where the Vassans are likely to break through. We must have the talismans of power before they do. So the east is like the last place to go, so let's go west first. Of course, the ghost attack. Whale of the Banshees, you're all dead. Ah, these guys look relatively weak. I don't know if they you have any special attacks, but uh, I think it might be more important to kill the wraiths. They're the kind of enemies that might have some sort of drain attack. Ah, Christiane got drained immediately. <laughs> ah, they don't look too difficult. I'm not going anywhere near them. Oops, that was silly. Okay, not particularly strong, um, but there's a problem. So, uh, if we look at Christiana, she just lost a level in uh, something. It's hard to say exactly. You can see there, one level drained. So, trying to decide what I should do here. The truth is I should immediately cast Restore to return it. I'm worried that in this game, I forget the details, but she may have actually lost experience permanently there. So she's a triple class character. She should have approximately the same amount of experience as Rodica. Like, not exactly the same, right? Like, if you compare Pixel to me, there's a slight difference. Um, Bella to Pixel is a slight difference. But they're within, like, you know, 40,000 of each other. Uh, Christiana is now 160,000 difference. Maybe if we cast Restore there, we'll fix it. It's not safe to rest here. So I can't cast Restore until I get to a safe area. We have to find a safe area. Could just leave the dungeon. Vala probably wouldn't like that. I wonder if where we talk to her is safe to rest. It was. Okay, so that's good. Um, let's just rest to restore our spells while we're doing it. Just, you know, because this place is scary, man. I'm scared. Okay, so spells are back, except I did one thing that I should, I, one thing I didn't do that I maybe should have. Um, magic, memorize. I'm gonna want some restorations, apparently. And let's just do this quick. More heal spells is going to be fine for now. Um, I We'll just go with healing for now, honestly. It's easy. What do you want? More healing spells, always. And we'll keep that. Do a quick rest. Just to show you guys how it all works, you know. Now you've seen me memorize magic on camera. Hope you're happy. All right. 
So, Christiana, did your... Ex okay, her experience did return. See, I think the trouble is you have to make sure you restore... There's like... I think in tabletop there's like a... There's a number of turn or number of days go by before it's gone permanently. And I think in gold box it's more like... Like in, 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 in the old advanced D&D for the video games, I think it's more like... Once you've reloaded a game with level drain, it's gone forever, so... The good news is, I think we're fine. And as long as we can not lose experience permanently, I won't be too upset. I suppose we should probably end the episode pretty soon. Let's maybe check out that northwest corner, or uh, northeast corner. Giants are fighting over a rock, their eyes ablaze with greed. Vala orders them to hand over the rock. No, ours. This is probably one of the four elements we need, right? All right. Vala, you're up. Vala will be fine, probably. And you know what? Everyone's fine, honestly. I'm not... Like, fella has to kill something. Oh, I hit delay twice! What am I doing? Look, fella, you have to kill these giants. It's your job. Like, he does double damage to giants. Thank you. Alright, those guys are a joke. The rock is laced with veins of gold and a powerful magic emanates from the stone. You stow it. It is the world stone and will control the earth elementals when used with the oak root staff. Yay! Alright, one done. Glad we made a little bit of progress. One talisman is buried in the room to the east. It will allow us to control the fire elementals. Giants are working to... The door to the east bursts open as giants run screaming. The east? Did she mean here? Vasan warriors stream through a break in the wall. Well, we get some sexy looking mages. I, I mean, okay, last time they put up a bit of a fight. This time we start adjacent to them, which is bad for them. Um, technically Shinga can move to here and attack the mage. Always priority number one. Um... I'm pretty confident Christiana can take out the other mage. This one down there. So maybe what I'll do is as the... Uh, I mean, I'm just going to go play with the, the mage up here. Oops, that was really not what I meant to do at all. Alright, there's going to be no magic this time, no problem. I'm glad Vala protected me from the warrior. No magic for you. Alright, this is going pretty well. Alright, Christiana got it, no problem. I'm thinking I'd like Rodica to get a backstab here. You need to really practice to get your backstabs to work. It's difficult. Eh, it's probably not gonna work. Because the enemy had a turn. You have to, in case you've forgotten, for a backstab to work, you have to have someone attack them, and then your thief needs to attack them from the exact opposite side during the same round, so it's difficult to know if you're on the same round, without the enemy getting a turn in between. So, you know, it's, it's hard. That's what she said. We gotta, if it says from behind, it probably means you could have had a, a backstab, but you weren't a thief, so you just got a bonus to hit. Good amount of experience. 
Um, I guess we'll detect magic again. So, I, w I don't think these mages had anything that's terribly valuable. Um, it's worth checking, but I doubt those are going to be very good. Um, and then the, the, the warriors seem pretty weak as well. I, I really don't think anything we got here is going to be good. Yeah, I mean, this stuff is too low. You need Bracers of AC 3 to really compete with what we're equipped with right now. I guess, depending on how many rings or protection you've got, like, you need your Bracers to replace, like, Plate plus 3 or so. Um, and at that point... Well, the Bracers can't do that. You need your Bracers to be about the same as the Plate is at base level. And then you can equip a ring to get whatever bonus your plate normally would get. Plate mail has a base of armor class 3, which means Rodica is essentially wearing plate mail for free. And then if she has a good ring, it's like plate plus 3, is essentially the logic here. Um, there is better bracers, like the all-powerful bracers AC2. And with that, plus a ring of protection plus 4, it's like a plus 5 plate. Uh, that's pretty crazy. So, good news for me, right? Anyway, let's get out of here. Alright, so there's supposed to be a uh, fire elemental control here. I don't want more ghosts. I I, I am afraid of ghosts. Alright, well after what happened last time, um, we're going to do this a little different. Namely, this. <laughs> I'm a simple man. It's kind of hard to hit them given our party layout. Not bad. Oops. Dang it! What was I thinking? I wonder if I can just turn them. Yeah, you can just turn them. Alright, well, I'm sorry Vala, you got uh, level drain there. It's less important with a temporary party member, but I still feel bad, so let's deal with that. Alright, I'm glad we finally learned the ability to counter level drain because it's a real pain in the neck is this just a dead end nothing there i it was this room a jeweled crucible rests in a niche in the wall its crimson flames lick the stone the walls around the niche blurn white as elementals emerge from the molten rock the tyrant's flame is ours I guess we could have pre-buffed here, but elementals haven't been terribly dangerous in general. Um, so probably not a great idea to use Fireball. But, um, Cone of Cold, you know. Let's try a Cone of Cold. I have great success with Cones of Cold. And now I'm a really high level mage, so I'm sure it'll be really fun. Alright, so... The trouble, of course, is Cones of Cold cast between your target and your caster in a cone. What does a cone look like? I don't know. It, I mean, it's hard to say. This will If I target it here, will it hit Christiana? I don't know. If I target it here, will it hit all these monsters? I, I don't know. Also, I don't have enough magic user levels to even cast it this far away. I can only cast it this far away. So I'm going to cast it here. We'll see what happens. It was perfect. I mean, that hit, it didn't do a ton of damage, but it didn't hit my party members, and it hit almost all the fire elementals. I'm pretty happy with that. You know, that's good. Um, another fun way to do something here would be lightning bolts, and this should just work easily. Like that was. Pretty solid lightning bolt, right? I couldn't say this could have gone any better. Honestly, this was a really good battle. We got to show off a couple spells, killed all the enemies, got a bit of experience. It's been a good day. The crucible burns brighter. Its flames dancing wildly as if something were trapped within it. Do you take it? Of course we take it. And some more experience. Look, levels! This is the perfect time to end the episode.
We got half of the four items, and we got some level up. So, Shinga is leveling up really quickly, by the way, um, which is great. You know, nothing wrong with that at all. Let's see in-game. Well, not quite in-game, but you know what I mean. Like, without going to training. Let me turn this on for you guys. Level up screen. So he gets three hit points. Um, like I've sort of mentioned before, high level ups don't give very many hit points. There's no dice roll. Fighters get three per level. Mages get one per level. Uh, clerics get two per level. It's just, that's all you get. His saving throw against paralyzation is now one. So, uh... I'm actually not sure if that even works. <laughs> so usually in tabletop, when you roll a d20, a 1 counts as like a critical fail and always fails. And 20 is a critical success and, well, it almost always is a success. Um, so if you only need to roll a 1 to save, but a 1 is always a critical fail, does it actually count? I don't know. I mean, that's a weird one. Anyway, it's possible he's now, unless the enemy gets a bonus, like, you know, minus two to your roll, which technically you've rolled a one, minus one is zero, I guess, so you didn't get it. Um, but against normal saving throws, he might be completely, you know, immune. He's always going to save against those. Maybe. Unless rolling a one is still considered a fail. I, that's a good question. Does anyone know tabletop well enough to answer that? If your saving throw is literally one, does rolling a one count as a save or a critical fail? <laughs> anyway, he also got an extra level four spell slot. Great. And Pixel got a level up. Look, it's all... When you click the button, everyone gets their level ups. His Thaco decreased, which is nice. His saving throws got better and he learned nothing. He just got a fighter level up, so he didn't learn anything about um, magic. This is why high level fighters don't matter much. Now, he didn't get 3 HP because he's a dual class, so all of his level up HP gains are divided by 2. So he should have gained 3 for a fighter level, but because he's multi class, 2 classes divide by 2. If you're a triple class, divide by 3. That's simple. And I guess it rounds up. Lucky him. Um, but yeah, all his saves got better. Which is nice, but this is when, like I said before, um, it might have been smarter for him to be a human, get to level 15 fighter, and then be uh, dueled into mage, so he's only getting mage experience. Whatever. I'm not going to worry about it right now. There you go, Pixel. Hope you enjoy the level up. Also, keep in mind that until he got to level 16 mage, like if I, if I had dual class, like fighter level 15 into mage, he couldn't actually get this amazing Thaco, his saving throws, or his equipment uh, abilities until he surpassed it. So level 16 mage, which... Well, I guess if you were a single class, you'd probably get there pretty quick. Because honestly, if uh, a paladin who levels up fairly slowly is level 19, you probably need, like, considerably less experience to get to level 16 mage. So, anyway. Um, that's all. So that is our episode. Thanks for watching, everybody. Uh, I think we're off to, should probably remove that extra screen there, sorry. Should probably end the episode here. I will see you for the second half of this dungeon next time.